Hi, I'm John Balbana, a professor at the University of Texas. In our Introduction to Embedded Systems class has a class competition where each group of two students will create a handheld video game, which has the microcontroller, a slide pot for input, buttons for input, a DAC to create sound and graphics uh, to show the game. And they put that all together to make a game that's fun to play. Now let's watch. Our next game is called Tetris. Uh, so tell us about your game. So it's pretty much the standard Tetris. You press the button to start, and then you can press the button to rotate the piece, and then you move the slide pot to move it left and right. Um, it does make sounds. You can't hear them. But, okay, so each of the pieces is made up of four little blocks, and that's just how Tetris works. They're all made up of four blocks. However, in order to make sure that our pieces did not overwrite what was already there, we had to program each of the four little blocks individually. So whenever you see a piece falling, that's not just one thing that, that's falling, that's four things that are falling. Uh, and then they fall in that particular account. There you go. Ta-da! Nice. You are good at this. You're doing a you, you are, you are powerful. <laughs> Our third contest contestant is Space Shooter, and so uh, tell us about your game. All right. Well, this is just our version of a classic Space shoot 'em up game with aliens. Uh, we made our own graphics for most of the sections, rather than we used a couple from Space Invaders. And if you want, we have three different stages on here. Each stage has a regular level like this, and then a boss level that shows up when the warning sign flashes. Get on. So you do have to get through each stage. Uh, your lives will refresh when you get to the next stage because we found out otherwise you can't get through the entire game. <laughs> also, you'll see, sometimes you'll see a little box on the screen. If you shoot those, it gives you an ammo power-up. We have about seven of those, and you get to keep them as you go through the next levels. But if you use a light, it will degrade you one level down. Morning. All right, here comes the boss level. Oh. Yeah. Mm. We do have sound for this. You just can't hear it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if we decide to use a toggle for it, you can go anywhere on the screen, so you can go all the way up to the top if you want, and that's what it looks like when it wins. Mm. We'll go to the next stage, all his lives will refresh. Yeah. But also, you may notice that the aliens seem to be shooting directly at you. We did include that as a feature, so you can't stay still because they will aim for you. <laughs> well, Oh, oh no! Yeah. Okay. 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 Just one. He's sweating. He's sweating. He's sweating. Oh! Oh! Nice. Nice. So there's an awful lot of. Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. Lots going on. We made pretty much a more simplistic version of the Space Invaders, and really, it's. The reason why I say it's different is because like, if you think about Flappy Bird, Flappy Bird is actually a very simple game, right? So pretty much you just keep going and the really hard part is that you have to keep it consistent and you have to keep it um, continuous. So this game, you can only shoot once at a time and the purpose of the shooting once at a time is if you miss, then you cannot shoot again. So in reality, when you play a game, you want to keep, every time you lose, you want to keep going, you get um, troubled and you want to keep going faster and you want to keep, reach the point in which you reached before. 
but then you can't do that because if you go faster, you will lose. Right? Welcome to Tap Tap Supreme. So we did kind of a variation on Guitar Hero and the more recent app Tap Tap. Um, so we used the, a, uh, the ADC slide pipe to select the song. Um, once we decide what song we want to play, we can press any of the buttons to start playing. So whenever the button gets right before the screen, you want to press it. Maybe? Yep. Whoop. Much better. So as you can tell, the quality of the song isn't quite like <laughs> awesome. Um, the reason that is is because we used a sign table, and that was to overcome uh, the challenge of having huge arrays because we couldn't really fit, you know, 30-second songs into our code. Mm -hmm. So instead, we used a uh, we used a sign table. We had a few. And so each song was kind of defined by a struct that had like the notes and the rhythm laid out. And you could also sort of define which sign table you wanted to use based on the instrument.